We're going to take a delicious bite out of one of Bun 1.0's most exciting features, and that's macros. We're going to show you how to use them, how to get the most out of them. You're not going to find this anywhere else. I can't wait to get into it. And speaking of things you can't get anywhere else, today's sponsor is Brilliant. More about them in a bit. Let's get right into it. All right, so I've got Bun installed. I'm going to go create our Bun project by doing Bun init. We'll call this Bun macros. The entry point will be source index.ts. So I'm going to create a new folder called macros and within that macro test.ts. Now into this macro test file, I'm just going to bring in a bunch of functions that, that export different types from our macros. And macros are just JavaScript or TypeScript functions that are run at build time as opposed to being run at runtime. So let's go bring this into our index.ts. And now we'll import get string from those macros. We'll import it with the type macro extension. Obviously, TypeScript isn't actually liking this all that much. It thinks it's syntactically not okay, but it actually is. And what we're doing is we're telling Bun that we want to run this at build time as opposed to running this at runtime. And then we'll console log the output of our get string. Let's try it out. So we run it, we see that we console log out the output of that function, just like you think we normally would. But what's happening here is that Bun is essentially building and running it internally. What we want to do is actually try out that build and see what actually happens in the code. So let's do Bun build source index as opposed to Bun run. So because I haven't specified an output directory of build, it's just outputting the output of the build right into our console like this. And this is what would be in the JS file that would be the result of the build. And what you can see is that import is gone. And the output of that function is essentially just right there as the string that was the output of the get string function. All right, well, let's bring in the rest of the functions and then try them out one by one to see what types of output you can output from a macro and have it inject it into our built code. And let's try it again. All right, so this is telling us that we can't do a function. So the output of get function is in itself a function that returns hello world. And it seems to have liked everything else. So let's actually just comment out get function and try it again. And there we go. We got strings, numbers, booleans, arrays, and objects. Everything looks good. So that's just one limitation that you're going to have to think of when you think about how to construct your macros. You just can't output a function from your macros. So the next thing I want to try out is, can we access the file system with one of these macro functions? So I want to try out with a directory full of markdown files to see if we can convert those into HTML files and then return from the macro the list of the files that we generated. So let's go and create a new macro file. We'll call it build markdown files. And first, I'm going to bring in a bunch of file system utilities like read, dir, sync. That's going to give us the contents of a directory. In this case, whatever the current working directory is, and then docs. And then we're going to go through that directory, see if every file has .md on the end. And if it does, then we'll go and take that file name and put it into an array of file names that will return as the output of our macro. So now we need some docs. So I've got a hello.md. I've got a sum code, and I've got a cute picture of a dog. So there are some markdown files in there. There is a image in there, and it's going to have to be able to distinguish between those two. Okay, so let's go and replace our index, and then we'll bring in that build markdown files function as a macro and invoke it in a console log just like we did before. Let's try it out. Okay. <laughs> hey, it looked pretty cool. So now we've gone through that directory. We've seen that there is some code.md and hello.md, and it's cool, so we can access the file system out of a macro. Interesting. All right, the next thing we need to do is convert these markdown files to HTML. So let's bring in marked for that. We also need to add the types for marked. And then we can bring in marked parse. That's going to parse our markdown and turn it into HTML. So where do we want to put these things? Well, I think we want to put them in a new directory called docs.html. So we need to make sure that that docs.html exists. And if it doesn't, then we'll go and create it. Now, the next thing we need to do is read the file and create the markdown. So to read the file, we're going to use 
bun file. And that's one of the new extensions that comes with bun that connects to the zig runtime. Now, bun file is one of those things where the authors of bun say that you're going to get a whole lot more performance because of how fast that zig native code is. So hopefully it should make your macros a lot faster because we're using the bun native stuff like bun file. Now, after we've got that text of the file, let me use the marked parse to parse it into the HTML. And then we use bun write, again, a bun zig native function to write the HTML that we just created into that file. And the last thing I need to do is copy any non-markdown files into there because the markdown may actually reference those files. So we'll get that dog. All right, let's build. And now we can see that we have a docs HTML directory and we have HTML in there. Ha <laughs> ha, this is looking good. So we're actually creating essentially like a static site generator using just bun macros. Cool. Okay, now that we have something working, let's go and add into our package JSON a build script to actually build and we'll build it into a directory. And we'll call that directory dist. So let's give it a try. Let's run build. And now it's created one file. Let's go check out disk directory. And we'll have a look at that file. Hey, looks pretty good. All right, I think it's actually time to start putting a face on this thing. So let's bring in a server. In this case, we'll bring in Hano or Hono. Not quite sure which. I did try to bring in Elysia but there were some issues with Alicia and Bun 1.0 and it not handling static files properly. And this is obviously we want to serve static files, which we just created over in docs.html. And Hano seems to be the one that does that the right way. That's actually one of the things I found with Bun is it's a great exercise in being a dynamic developer. Kind of when you can't do it this way, figure out a way to do it that way. And that's kind of one of the fun things about exploring things like Bun 1.0. Okay, so let's bring in Hano, and let's go over to our index, and then we'll use Hano to create a new app, and much like Express, we'll do use, and then we'll bring in this serve static. That's going to allow us to serve out static files from that given directory. Now I have added this rewrite request path function. That just takes the URL and turns it from like slash docs slash some code and turns it into docs.html some code.html. Now, another weird thing about Hano is you just export the app and it automatically runs it for you. Okay, I guess. All right, let's run it. Now it's running, although it doesn't tell us much about that. And it's over on port 3000 and we can go to docs, some code and see our beautiful markdown. <laughs> awesome. But now we want a homepage slash. So we'll use get slash and then we'll give it back some HTML. And that HTML is a div with an unordered list that has all of our anchor tags to the files we just created. So why is it giving us the right squiggly? Well, we're in a TS file and not a TSX file. So let's do that. And let's go fix our build. But that's still not fixing those red squigglies. What we need to do is tell TypeScript to look at Hano for the JSX as opposed to React. So let's go over to our TS config and then tell it to use Hano JSX for the JSX. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's give it a try. So we'll go back to the slash route. Ha <laughs> ha, there you go. Nice, okay. Well, let's add a little bit of Tailwind and actually make a pretty good looking static site generator. So let's add Tailwind as well as Tailwind typography. Typography is going to give us this nice support for the markdown syntax. And let's initialize our Tailwind. And then make sure that we look in the right spots for our Tailwind. That would include all the TSX and TS in the source directory, as well as that docs.html directory that we created. And we'll bring in the plugin for typography. Now let's go create some styles. Bring in our Tailwind. And we're going to bring in some new scripts that will help us support this new environment. In particular, dev. Dev is going to concurrently run the bun run hot to run our server, as well as our Tailwind dev to monitor what Tailwind classes we're using. All right, let's hit save and let's try it. Let's just do bun run dev. So it created a public directory with style CSS. That's got our tailwind in it. Good, good, good. 
and looks good, no changes so far, but we need to bring in the Tailwind CSS to actually be able to use it and see it. So let's create a page template that will wrap all of our pages in. So over in source, I'll create a new file called page template. And we'll just create a generic template that takes content being an HTML escape string and then puts it within a frame that has view transitions on, of course, and also our Tailwind styles. All right, let's give it a go. We'll bring in our page template. We'll serve everything out of public as static, and then we'll just wrap our div in that page template. And then if we go back to the home page, looks good. But of course now our statically generated build time macro generated pages are still on this white background. So let's go and use a page template in that context. So I need to change my build markdown files dot ts to tsx bring in our page template and then down here as we write them we will wrap the content in the page template and then we'll use prose which is brought in by that typography extension to format the h1s and h2s and all that that are created by markdown all right let's go back to our index and make sure that we're bringing in markdown from the right spot tsx now let's do another build pass to build those files and we'll run dev <laughs> wow nice we'll go back home hello wow how cool is that a static site generator in just that fast and talking about learning things fast there's no faster place to learn things than on this week's sponsor and that's brilliant so as you can see from this video i'm the kind of person that likes to learn interactively i like to just try with stuff play with it see what happens and brilliant is a place where I can learn that way. And that has helped me so much in terms of learning skills like data sciences, which are extremely valuable in today's job market. You can learn all kinds of stuff on Brilliant. The basic sciences, math, whatever you want, it's right here. And it teaches it to you in a very interactive and fun way. The examples are fun and exciting. I love it. Another thing it does is it keeps track of your progress. It keeps you honest. It keeps you wanting to come back to the site to keep elevating your rank. It feels really good to just spend a little bit of time every day just giving yourself a bit more knowledge, which will help you in everything you do in your personal life and in your work life. And just try out Brilliant. You'll get your first 30 days for free when you go to brilliant.org slash Jack Harrington. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off of your annual subscription. It is a fantastic offer for my friends over at Brilliant. So now we've done one thing with button macros. That's to create this static site generator so easily. Now let's try out something different. Let's do something where we're actually analyzing the application at build time and then taking that data and allowing us to see it at runtime. So I've had this issue before where... Applications in production, you don't know what code they're running. So you want to actually just take a look at the app and see what code is there. Now, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go and look at the node modules directory that was created during the build process, cache that data, the size of each one of the modules, and then use that as an HTMX endpoint and put it right back into this app so that we can see right here what our node modules look like. Okay, let's get back into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a scripts directory and into that a script called git module sizes. It'll be a shell script and I'm just going to be able to run it from the build process and get the data from it. So I actually didn't write this Unix command myself. I just asked Copilot to go and give me a Unix command line that would go through node modules, would give me all of the first and second level directories that have package JSON in it and then do a DU on it and get the get size, yada, 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 sort it numerically, and it came up with this. So, all right, let's give it a go. Go into our shell, we'll schmod it so that we can run it. And the output is a sorted list of all of the module directories. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of date functions. And then the size of each one in kilobytes. So up at the top is <laughs> date FNs, which is, I guess, Wow, 24 megs, crazy. Okay, and then RxJS, did we bring in RxJS? I don't think so. All right, whatever, anyway, doesn't really matter. So, okay, so we're gonna run this out of one of our macros. 
So I'll create a new macro in here we'll called get module sizes. And into there, I'm going to paste a function called get module sizes. It's going to run that script that I just showed you. Now, of course, all this code is available to you for free on GitHub. So don't worry about kind of tracking along with it. You can just pull it and try it out for yourself. All it's going to really do is call bun spawn and spawn ZSH with our get module sizes shell in it, and then take the output, split it. It's going to create a total, which would be the total number of kilobytes. And then it's going to return to us the module name, the size, which is going to be a string. That's either going to have the size of megabytes or kilobytes. And then the percent, that's the percent of the overall no modules for that particular module. Now we're going to use HTMX to grab this from our client. So I want to bring in the HTMX library or whatever you want to call it, library, framework, whatever. I don't care. It's cool. And then over at our page template, we're going to add HTMX as a script tag. And then in our body, now HTMX boost tells HTMX that when you do navs or when you bring in new HTML via like a Git or something like that, you want to go and do a diff with the existing DOM and inject it nicely as opposed to just doing a document write of the whole thing, which gives you nicer spa style navigations. All right, now over in our index.tsx, we're going to bring in our get node module sizes and again, invoke it as a macro so that it runs at build time. Then we're going to create an endpoint. And this is one of the things that I really love about this called slash no module sizes. And it's just going to return HTML. We're not going to wrap it in the page. It's just going to be HTML. And it's right here, right in the TSX. How easy is that? And we're just going to get, iterate through our get no module sizes. We're going to take the size, the module and the percent and just lay them out, make them look real nice. And then to run this, we're going to go back into our page template and right below the UL, We'll create a button called get module sizes. It's going to go get the endpoint that we just created, take that HTML and put it into a div called module sizes. All right, let's give it a go. So first let's build. And then we will run dev. Go to the home page, get module sizes. Whoa, how cool is that? We're getting a report of all the node modules in our running application that was created at build time. So we know when this application was built exactly what it was built with. And if you want to see that, let's go back over to our code. And we'll bring up code on the disk directory. And now we can see our built application. And if we look for something like data fence, because we know that's there. We can see that the output of our get no module sizes macro is embedded right in the code here. In fact, we don't actually have to do that await there. Let's get rid of that. All right, so let's see. Okay, so go back here. Yeah, once you kind of look at this stuff, kind of get a sense of the way that you're injecting it. Okay, so there we go. Well, it it's not happy with that, but it really should be. Let's give it a try. Unbuild, okay and bun run dev. Yeah, TypeScript's not happy, but it actually is happy. So yeah, that's one of the things you kind of run into a little bit with this is that the output of get no module sizes is in itself a promise, right? It's async, but because it's actually compiled at build time, we already have the array. And so it's not really a promise. So that's kind of an interesting issue. But as you can see, amazing power at your fingertips when it comes to these bun macros. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed learning what bun macros are and how to use them in these two different scenarios and the limits of what you can inject into the AST. I think they are novel. People have been talking about bun macros and saying, hey, it's just a way to run code to get compile time. We could do that anyway. Not really. You can run code at compile time, obviously, but the cool thing here is that you can run code and then take some output of that code and inject it into the AST of your application. That's novel, that's unique, that's powerful, and I'm really excited to see what we do with it in the future. If you have any ideas, be sure to put those down in the comment section right down below. And of course, in the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button Click on that bell and be notified the next time a new one of these blue collar code radios comes out.